Good morning. I want to welcome you to our Mountain Movers Intercessory Prayer Call. And I'm Pastor Jewel Williams, one of the lead pastors at Abundant Life Church of God. And today our prayer focus is on salvation and the Holy Spirit leading. And I thank you for joining me this morning. I know it's early. It's Christmas Eve and uh, Merry Christmas to those that um, have joined and will be joining the call. But I wanted us to continue to just keep our time together. And so today, as I said, we're talking about salvation. And one of the greatest things that we really need to understand is God's word says that he doesn't want any to perish. So this prayer isn't rather God wants to save our loved ones, but asking for God's spirit to break down barriers of the hearts of our loved ones and to use us and others to prepare their heart to receive. And so additionally, before we pray, I just want to share scripturally what God says about salvation. And I just think oftentimes when we even go to share the gospel with individuals or share our testimonies, we almost go in as though we're fighting them to receive. But I just believe if we let the word do what it does and convicts the hearts that we just can join in with the word of God and to show and to share what God is doing. So I just want to give you a couple of scriptures this morning before we pray. Romans 3, 23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that means that no matter how great I am, no matter what I have or don't have, um, I still need God's salvation. But there's also encouragement on that side because many of us feel like I'm not good enough and I've done too much. And so God couldn't forgive me because of how horrible I am. But his words said all have sinned and fall short. So that means we all come on an equal playing field before God in need of his great salvation. Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so while our sinful ways, our sinful life keeps us on the outside, the gift of Christ is what allows you and I to be able to have that life with Christ. So while we're celebrating Christmas and the birth of Christ, He didn't just come to be born, but he came to die for our sins. And so even as we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Christmas with the mindset that Easter was coming, that Resurrection Sunday was coming. Hallelujah. John 3, 3 says, Jesus was pride verily. I mean, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And so it doesn't matter how good I am. I hear people often say I'm spiritual and and that all sounds really um, deep and great. But there is just one way and that you won't see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. And that means born again by God's directive, not by how I think. See, I can feel and think whatever I want to, but God has a mandate and he has a plan. And he said, we must be born again, not by natural means, but supernaturally by spiritual means that I am born. I am, I died to this life, but then I'm born again in Christ. And that is next scripture is John 14 and six. Jesus answered and said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. See, again, I can I can tell you I've got some great ideas and I can feel like I should be able to do this then and I should I could feel like because you know I'm a good person or that I I give to charities or that I do good deeds that that's enough but again God's word says no it is one way and one way only it's through Jesus so it doesn't matter how much we mock him uh, how much we say against him there is only one way and that's through Jesus Christ Romans 10, 9 and 11 said, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Hallelujah. That's that's a promise that all of us have. That That's a promise that is for anybody that's willing to accept Jesus, when you accept that he's the way, then there's this next step of confessing. When you open your mouth and say, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I'm confessing that I want him as Savior. And I'm believing it in my heart. So I'm not just saying it with my mouth. There's a heart connection. And when it's a heart connection, it becomes a mouth expression. And so, Lord, help this to be a heart connection. Even when we pray today, we're praying that our loved ones and those that we know need salvation, they will become a heart connection so that it can become a mouth confession. And so we just ask the Lord for that because anyone who believes, it says he will never be put to shame. And then 2 Corinthians 5, 15 says, and he died for all, that those who live shall no longer live for themselves, 
but for him who died for them and was raised again. See, this leads us into understanding that we died when Christ died, he died for us, but we also die with him so that we no longer live to this life, but we now are raised with him. We live the life that he died for us to have. And he didn't leave us here alone, but he left us with his savior, with, the, with I mean, with his comforter, with our helper, our, our paracolese, in other words, the Holy Spirit. So when you and I accepted Christ as savior, we weren't left alone anymore. We weren't left to try to figure this out by ourselves, but he gives us a helper. And so as we're praying today, we're not only praying for salvation, but we're praying for some of us that maybe are saved, but we're still trying to handle our own lives. We're still trying to do it our own selves. We're still trying to fix our own problems. We're still trying to uh, figure out how to how to let go of old habits. Well, yeah, you can do it, but you need the, the Holy Spirit dwelling within you to help you get to that place of wholeness, that place of being delivered, letting go of some anger and hate and habits and, and all of those things that were in you. God died, Christ died so that you have the access to that, but now you and I have to willingly say, Lord, I want to receive it. Revelations 3 and 20 says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Don't you know that you have an open invitation from God? He says he is knocking at the door. And the door of what? The door of our hearts. He's knocking to the door of our habits. He's knocking at the door of the things that, that we have held in. And he is saying if we open the door to him, he's going to come in. He's going to come in and we're going to have a personal relationship. You hear people talk about personal relationship. Well, you don't dine, generally dine with people that you don't know you you dine with people that you know and if you dine with them long enough even if they were strangers they no longer will be stranger because you're in conversation one with the other and so Christ wants to be in our lives so that we can have conversation hallelujah one with the other I got two more two more John 14 26 says but the advocate the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you see you and I again we get saved, but I need for us to understand salvation is not the end point, but it's the beginning mark. It's where you set and forth from. And when you allow Christ in and when you accept him as your savior, that next step is you now have access to the advocate, the Holy Spirit. And he has come to teach us all things, to remind us all things, to help us in all things, to help us to walk, to help us to do what God has called us to do. The last scripture is Acts 2, 38. And it says, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, there's a lot of debate about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, first of all, when you're saved, you have you have the Holy Spirit because you, you can't get saved without the Holy Spirit. But there's this process. Some people call it baptism. Some people call it, you know, the infilling. It doesn't matter the name that you call it. What it simply means is I am no longer going to be the ruler of my life. I have taken Jewel off the throne. I've taken that, that false trinity of me, myself, and I off the throne of my life. And I am now letting the true king, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit dwell and rule in my life. And so I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to have access to me and access through me and to work in me so that I can be everything that God has called me to be. And it is when I allow myself to be released into that, uh, allowing him to have the total access i'm baptized in his holy spirit i'm i'm his his i'm infilled with his holy spirit so that i can be all that i've been called to be and so as we go to prayer i didn't have any names of those that were seeking prayer today on the line but even as i pray and as you listen to this or if you and i listen to it live but come back and listen to the recorded version you think on, you pray with me. Who is it that you are asking the Lord to touch? And and I said, we already know God wants our loved ones and, and, and all to be saved. And not only our loved ones saved, but he also wants you and I to have, um, act, uh, excuse me, he wants you and I to allow him access to our lives so that he can live in us the way he desires to live. And so as we come into the end of this year, my prayer is that we prepare ourselves for what God wants to do for us and through us in the coming year. We're praying for salvation. We're asking God to use us in bringing those to Christ because we don't save anybody. Let's get that right. Let me get that straight. None of us saves anybody, but God uses us as the vessels to carry the message to those that need salvation. Let's pray. 
Lord God, I thank you today, Father, for this great offering gift that you give to us of salvation. I thank you today, Lord, that we are saved by your grace, not by our deeds, not by our work, not even by our own goodness, for our goodness is like filthy rags to you. But God, we stand before you today and thank you that you did not leave us in our sin, that you not leave us without a comfort. You not leave us unable to be able to walk and to be all that you called us to be. And so, Lord, just as Hebrew 3a says, do not harden your hearts as you did in in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness we pray lord god that you would break down those hardened hearts that you would break down that that shell that many have around their hearts that keeps them lord from being able to step in and to be able to receive the salvation on their lives so god we're asking you to tear down walls today tear down those walls of bitterness that have have um, kept many from being able to see their need for salvation. Go and break down those hearts of habits and addictions that keep people afraid and unable to see that you are the need. Because we have people that, Lord, are, are, are trying to fill that empty void with different things, with different addictions. And so, Father, we pray you break down the hardness of their hearts. We pray, Lord God, for our loved ones that we even see that have continued to hold hardness in their heart. But we ask you, Lord God, also we pray against that spirit, spirit a rebellion that keeps them from seeing their need but have them in a delusion and thinking that they are enough and that they can do it in their own way and their own attitudes but god we ask you to break down that hardness of heart and then, Lord, we ask that even in Hebrews 4 and 16, you said, then let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Well, God, we seek you. We come to your throne, your, your throne. And, and God, we ask and with confidence that you would give us mercy and that you would we would find grace in this time of need as we pray for those that need salvation, as we seek you to use us to be the ones that bring the, the, the message to your 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 children, the message to the people that need to know you, that need to hear from you. So God, we ask that you would help us, that we would be able to discern the needs and we would be able to speak with boldness, that we would be able to share your gospel like never before. So Father, we ask you to help us. And then Lord, even those that are saved, we ask you to help us to move away and move beyond just the elementary teachings about Christ and to move forward in maturity move from just this first foundation that had been laid of repentance and move then, Lord God, to help us to come to a place where we know that we can do the things that God has called us to do, Lord, that we can walk in our gifts, that we can we can be able to pray for those that are sick and see them get well. We can pray for those that have demonic op oppression and, and oppression. And Lord God, that we can pray and see you heal and set individuals free. So Lord, help us to move on from the elementary teachings. Help us to grow in your maturity. Help us to grow in your grace. Help us to grow and to become those glory carriers and glory manifestors in our lives that you have called us to be. Because Lord God, we understand that we don't enter into this because of as as they did in the Old Testament, where they gave the goats and the calves for sacrifices, that was just a showing of what was to come. But God, we know that it was through the blood of Christ, through the eternal Spirit offered Himself unblemished to God on our on our behalf. And now, so we're able to serve the living God. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of this new covenant, and He is the one that has called us to receive this promise, this eternal inheritance. And so He died as a ransom to set us free from sins and so that we are can be who you've called us to be he saved us lord not because of righteous things that we've done but because it's by his mercy he saved us through the washing and the rebirth and the renewing by the holy spirit so lord god help us to be able to stand strong in that salvation help us to not be tossed anymore back and forth in and out but lord help us to make up our mind and make a commitment to be all that you've called us to be and lord your promises that we will receive the power when the holy spirit comes upon us and that we will be witnesses to the ends of the earth so god we ask your holy spirit to arise in us right now in the name of jesus arise in us and give us the ability to do the things that you've called us to do arise in us and help us to be true disciples of jesus christ arise in us lord god and do that which you have called and have come to do in our lives because we know john baptized with water but he said and it said it in the word but you jesus going to baptize us with the holy spirit so lord god we ask for your holy spirit to rise up in us, equip us for the journey, equip us for our life, equip us so we can be what we've been called to do. 
And Lord, we thank you, Father, for you you are you dwell within our temples. You fill us with your joy and peace so that we can trust in you. And may your may you overflow hope within us. May your power and your Holy Spirit overflow in us. God, we thank you today. Lord, we ask you tear down those walls in the lives of our loved ones. God, we asking us you to, to use us when we speak. Lord, let us speak in the words that we speak to those. Let it be prophetic words that touches them at the very heart of what they're need is so that they would come before you and desire to want to be saved. God, I think about Smith Wigglesworth and how even he was just so filled with your power and your glory that when people came on a train, he was, I believe that someone just came and fell at his feet and said, why do you convict me? So what must I do to be saved? God rise up in us so that Lord God, people would even see us and begin to be convicted to say, what is it must I do to be saved? That your spirit and your power will be on us. And God, I know that requires us to get into your presence. So help us as your people to draw closer to you, to seek you, to seek your face, to seek your power, to seek your presence. Speak to us in our times of prayer. God, we ask you to burn off right now everything that's not like you. If there's some habits we holding on to, then I speak to habits right now in the name of Jesus and I curse any habit that's not like God. Father, I ask that you would let help us to let go of anger. And Lord, some have uh, problems with joy or alcohol some have sexual needs and sexual problems that they can't get a control of the lust in their body so god we speak to that spirit of lust and we bind you in the name of jesus oh lord god we asking you to help help us and have your way in us like never before even habits god that we don't even understand how to get rid of them but god we bring them to you because you are our deliverer you are the one that gives us the power and the authority over these things god i ask that as we go into this new year that you would open up our, our desire more. I'm asking you to increase the desire in your people. Give them a desire to want more of your presence, more of your word. I'm asking you to open up your word like never before so that we read the scriptures, that we have an understanding of who you are. We understand that, that what this great salvation has given to us so that we are no longer walking around as pauper and beggars begging you to do things that you have already said in your word that is open freely to us because all of the, our needs are met in your glory according to Christ Jesus in your riches, not ours, not in my abilities. I'm not, the things that I need are not going to come because of jewel. They're going to become because of you. And so father, help us to tap into the understanding that you are the one that provides for us. You are our shepherd. You are our father. You are our God. And everything we need is available to us through you. So father, I pray for somebody listening to this right now that may even be going through a time of discouragement. Maybe they've been praying for a husband or a wife. Maybe they've been praying for a child or a loved one and they don't see it. They don't see it. But God, I pray right now that you begin to manifest your work so that they begin to see and find encouragement and knowing that you are on the job, that you are reaching out and you are wooing Holy Spirit. Woo us. Woo those that are in need of you. Open up our ears. I pray that you would speak to hardened hearts right now and tear down every callousness of the heart, everything that is keeping them from hearing. God, I ask you to break down and break through all of those things that are keeping them from being able to hear your word. I I also pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would open up deaf ears that cannot hear, that have been, um, that have not been able to hear the truth of the word, that when they hear the gospel, the enemy has been right there to snatch the seed up. But I pray, Lord, that you would open up some ears to hear so that the word can be planted. And when it's planted in his heart, that it would begin to do a quick work, a super, super natural work in the lives of those that hear it. Father, I thank you that you would begin to even put people in the in, in our loved one's paths, that they just continue to hear the message over and over and over and over again. Let them be saturated with this message. Let them be saturated with the salvation story. Let them be saturated until it penetrates and they are able to come before you and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I stand in the need. I'm the one that need a great salvation in my life. Lord God, we are praying that you would begin to move amongst our young people like never before. I'm asking for a revival amongst our young people. Father, I'm asking you to go into the schools, both young and old, high schoolers, middle schoolers, even kindergartens, begin to show up in the schools of 
pour out of our children and begin to just touch them in the name of Jesus. I know they've been trying to keep God out of the school, but God, man's laws cannot keep you out. So Father, I ask you to break down those barriers and step into our schools and begin to come in and bless our children, change our children, open them up for salvation. May there be such a revival amongst our young people, Lord God, being set free, Lord. So, so many are dealing with different conditions and issues in life, and many are dealing with rapes and abuse and uh, other things that have gone on. Rejection, oh, the spirit of rejection is so strong amongst our young people. Many of them are dealing with deaf uh, words of, of defeat that have been spoken over them again and again. Some of them by their own parents, some of them by the teachers, but they've been told they ain't going to be nothing. They don't look like nothing. And so the enemy has just been building up this wall of rejection, a spirit of rejection in their hearts. But Father, I pray you go into those schools and you begin to take your soldiers in, Lord, and you begin to allow them to speak life over our children. Begin to tell them what they can be. Begin to tell them who they can be in you. So speak life into them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask you to just touch, Lord God, even in our jobs and our schools, Lord, may you begin to just set fire wherever we go. Father, if we find ourselves, those that are saved, if we find ourselves in the stores, let us begin to talk to the cashier and let us begin to do the things that will change somebody's life. Give us an assignment. God, give each one of us assignment this day and every day. Let it let us find at least one person that we can begin to share the gospel with, that we can begin to not tell them how horrible and sinful they are, but begin to tell them about the good news. See, you came, and when you came, you came to tell the good news. You didn't meet the shepherds in the field and tell them how horrible they were, but you showed up in that night season, and you began to tell them, don't be afraid, because I have good news. God, is some people that need to hear the good news. It's somebody that need to hear that, yes, you've been trying to fix it yourself, but there's a God that loves you that wants to step into your situation and fix it. He wants to fix your marriage. He wants to fix your loneliness. He want to fix your conditions. He want to fix your life at school. He want to fix your circumstances. He wants to fix you. He wants you. He wants you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, thank you, because if we remind ourselves, one day you showed up in our night season. You showed up in our lives when it was too dark and we saw no way of coming out of it. And when you showed up, you illuminated our lives and you said, I have good news. A savior is born. And so, God, we ask that you would help us to receive the blessing of salvation. We ask you now to help us to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Father, I ask you to baptize us afresh and new. Come like fire. Like Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones and you could not contain it lord god rise up in us today like fire that we cannot contain we cannot hold it that it burst forth from us because i hear you say that coming in the new year you're coming with explosion lord god's explode in us in a new way it blow off and blow up and blow out those things that are not like you remove every condition that is not like you break down every barrier that's not like you and open our eyes and our understanding holy spirit so we can see what things we need to let go open up our understanding so we can see how we need to change but often we don't change because we don't see it so god open up blinded eyes so that we can see today i was blind but now i see help me to see those areas in my life that need your hand and your touch so that I can bring them and lay them at the altar so that I can sacrifice them unto you because I know if I bring them and let you kill those things in me, what you'll rise in me will be far greater. You're making a better me today. So Lord God, I pray for everybody that hears this. Make, make a better them today. Restore them, refresh them, renew them. Take them to the next level that you have for their lives. God, we just glorify you today. We thank you today. Father, we just ask it in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to your name, Father. Oh, glory to your name, Father. We're asking you to have your way, Father. So, God, we ask you, says this Romans 15, 13, say, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, it's some individuals today that need some overflow of joy, some overflow of peace, some overflow, overflow, overflow in us today, overflow us with hope, all by the power of the Holy Spirit. I speak to that spirit of depression and I command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. As the people of God, God has given you your joy and your peace. He is the joy. 
He is your joy and that becomes your strength. So allow his joy to be your strength. Allow his peace that passes all understanding to overflow in you so that you can move and do what God has called you to do. And you can do it because the Holy Spirit dwells within you. So Holy Spirit, have your way in us today. Burn off all of those things that are trying to keep us oppressed and keep us depressed. Father, I speak a lifting in the spirit right now in the name of Jesus. This heaviness that I've been feeling for, for a while on different people, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. We will walk in the liberty and the freedom that Christ has died to give us. We are not no longer bound up. We're no longer hindered. We are free and we are free indeed. Oh God, thank you for setting the captives free today. I thank you right now. Overflow, I keep hearing. Overflow. Overflow in the abundance of what God has for you. He didn't come so you could just function through life. He came to give you abundant life. So walk in the abundance of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus, we declare it so. Oh, Father, thank you today. Now, Father, we ask you right now to begin to work in us, begin to work in our families. I pray for all of my children. I pray for every child represented uh, by the parents on the on this call. I pray for those loved ones and husbands and wives that are represented to each caller. And Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would bring salvation to our house, that you would save those in our house. And Lord God, you save those in our house. We'll go out and, and snatch somebody out of the houses of somebody else. We'll go and snatch others from the hand of the devil. God, we thank you today. We honor you today. Now, Lord God, we just say thank you. We thank you for every one of our children saved. We declare that it will be so. We thank you for every one of every husband saved, every wife saved, every co-worker saved. Lord God, we thank you for mothers saved, fathers saved, grandparents and great-grandparents saved today. We thank you for saving our young people. We thank you for the revival that's yet to come through our young people on our college campuses. Lord God, just begin to break out in a new way in our college campuses where many people have said, you know, our campuses are where you take your send your children off to become full of sin but god i declare they will be full of you let them go to the campuses and learn how to love you and trust you and and let go of those things that have bound them up let them be set on fire in such a way that it will just amaze those that see it and they'll say what has happened and what is happening on the on our college campuses no more shootings and killings but go god salvations and uh, revivals and refreshings and renewing outpouring of your spirit. We'll see healings and deliverance. And I just declare it in the name of Jesus. Oh God, have your way in the earth today. God, when sin rises up, you rise up even the more. When sin tries to discourage, when the enemy tries to discourage, you rise up even the more to bring encouragement, to bring hope. And so God, we walk in the hope that you have brought for us this day. So God, I just say thank you. And I seal this prayer today, Father. Again, Father, I ask that you seal this prayer. Give us that refreshing. Those that stand in need of you today, Father. Holy Spirit, bring that joy, bring that peace, bring that encouragement. Help your people to have a refreshing. I just, I just feel a release in the name of Jesus. I felt a heaviness before I came on this call. And I said, Lord, it's not me. So there's somebody that's heavy today. So, Lord, I thank you for the release. I feel it in Jesus' name. So, if that's you, I, I just declare you receive that release in the name. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Receive that release right now in the name of Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Believe by faith that it's done. And we declare deliverance. We declare salvation. We declare the Holy Spirit move in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, I just pray that each of you have a blessed Christmas on tomorrow. And I just pray that Christmas is not like it normally is. It's not just about food and the presents, but I pray that God's presence shows up in your gathering on tomorrow, wherever you may be. And I pray that his spirit would be so heavy in the place that you got to stop whatever you're doing and give him praise. I pray God shows up to our parties and events on tomorrow and he just take over this season because it is his season. So I just pray that you would join me next Thursday, the 31st, same time, five o'clock. Um, and we will be, the prayer will be the new focus in the new year. And I just have been going through the, the prophetic word that the Lord has showed me that I will share with you on next Thursday. And I know for those that call in, but for those that will be listening to the recorded, 
You can call in at 712-832-8330. Um, and that access code is 489-5856. Until we um, talk again, I just say have a, uh, a good, good day and goodbye. Savior, I come, quiet my soul, remember, redemption's hell, where your blood was spilled.